Welcome to my Drive podcast, where I, Mark Tuitet, will speak to athletes, entrepreneurs, scientists, and artists to discover what drives them. I'm honored to receive my first American guest on the Drive podcast. That's why my intros are in English instead of Dutch. In this episode, I talk to professor of psychology at Stanford University, Carol Dweck. She did fascinating research on personality, motivation, and intelligence, and is well known for her work and books about fixed and growth mindsets. Based on her research, she believes that everyone is capable of becoming capable. Listen to and learn from Carol Dweck. Professor Carol Dweck, uh, first of all, um, I'm really glad and honored to have you on my podcast. I love your work. I know your work about mindset. I think it's important work. Um, I just heard you uh, uh, give a speech here in Holland. Uh, first of all, you love Holland? Of you course. Here? Who doesn't love Holland? <laughs> you come here more often? <laughs> I've been here uh, several times before, and I hope to be here again in the future. Yes. Well, I love, love having you here. Um, first of all, um, w when in your life uh, did the spark become a flame if you talk about your research about, about mindset? I trace my interest in mindsets back to my sixth grade classroom. You know, you're 11 years old or 12 years old. My teacher seated us around the room in IQ order. Can you believe it? No way. <laughs> and even though I was kind of a winner in that hierarchy, mm -hmm. it made me stop wanting challenges. I just wanted to look smart. I thought that's what made me special and worthy. Yeah. And then ultimately, I started examining that in my research, how that belief in fixed intelligence can hold back the motivation of people who achieve, are well-achieving, and people who are struggling, and how a belief that you can develop your abilities can really, really motivate people to go beyond what they thought they could do. Yes, but at 11 years old, so you didn't think, well, I, I'm with the better half of the group here. Oh, let's enjoy that. You thought no. this is... I thought, oh, what if we take another IQ test and I'm not at the top? Yeah. A new girl came in in the middle of the year, and instead of thinking, she could be my friend, I thought, she better not take my seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're competing. It's yeah, everyone is a competitor. Um, it's a culture of judgment. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be judged, and then it becomes a culture of fear. Is that also uh, um, like the culture of judgment of wanting to perform? I, I'm from a, a top sport uh, athlete's mm -hmm. point of view. Uh, that's a culture of high performance. Yes. Culture, of course, in companies, high performance. Um, it seems... That could be the norm. Of course you want to perform well, but you also want to learn. And what happens in a fixed mindset where you think your abilities are fixed, you have it or you don't, you go so far into worrying about judgment. I don't want to do something too hard or, oh, I was supposed to be talented, but now I'm struggling. Maybe I shouldn't do this anymore. You go so far away from the joy of learning that it it harms your motivation and it can harm your, your ultimate achievement. Of course, a person in sports wants to win. Mm -hmm. Of course, a student in school wants to do well. Of course, an employee wants to succeed. But do they leave room for growth and learning and also Do they enjoy a collaboration or is it a competition? Mm. Oh, that's, we, yeah. that's what you call the growth mindset, right? Yeah. So you did research about fixed mindset, which you explained. Mm -hmm. what, what is growth mindset? Growth mindset is the belief that your abilities can be developed through hard work, but not just hard work, learning great strategies, um, getting input and help from others, brainstorming and collaborating with others. And it's this joy in improvement, in taking on hard things you've never done before and making progress. That is becoming smarter in 
in in a sense. So em- embracing the challenge, mm-hmm. loving the challenge. Mm-hmm. Because if I look at my own youth, it was I wasn't the biggest talent, but if people would say to me, uh, "Hey, I don't think you can do that," then I was like, "Well, I'll show you." But other people, I like that, and you did show them. Yes. But other people say, "Oh." Experts don't have any faith in me. Experts know what talent looks like, so I'd better put my energy somewhere else. Is that a misconception about about talent? So, if I look at talent, uh, I think the 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 what we see as talent probably if if I go to a soccer pitch or a, a football field, I, I I see somebody with really good technical skills. Let's say uh, somebody 16, 17 years old. Whoa, he's talented. Look at his skills. Or if you're in a classroom and you have mm-hmm. a high IQ, oh, that kid is smart. It's talented. Is is that's how we look at talent mostly? Yeah, and but we don't know what people have done to develop that talent. Mm-hmm. Does that high achieving student read all the time? Have they enjoyed mathematics from a young age and really played games and and done tasks? Uh, the talented athlete. Maybe they came with some talent, but they enjoyed playing the game mm-hmm. and they practiced a lot and they've grown their talent. The kids who don't look talented, who knows what they're capable of under the right circumstances. So growth mindset doesn't promise that you can do anything, mm-hmm. but it says, hey, Put in the passion, put in the strategies, get great mentorship and coaching, see what happens. Yeah, over a long period of time, mm-hmm. probably. Yeah. So I, I know a lot of people, a lot of talents who sometimes bloom after their 20s, even after their 30s, or uh, in sports too. Th- there is such a misconception, I think, that, that talent is fixed at se- 16, yeah. 17 years old. If you don't have it, yeah. you're off. So book. you've seen plenty of people blossom later. Yeah. We don't want to be in a society that, that doesn't recognize that that can happen. We don't want our societies to say at 11 years of age, here are the kids who can make a contribution to society, and here are kids who can't. Yes. <laughs> Why would you want to do no. that? That's Why not the right want, strategy, probably. Why would you cu- want to cut off half the kids, a quarter of the kids, mm-hmm. from their potentially important contribution to society? So how can you help them develop their potential, their human potential? Mm-hmm. I think you you close with a uh, your talks with a really great uh, uh, sentence about human potential. That you want... You want me to say the sentence? What's what's the <laughs> sentence again? I, I yeah. said instead of looking at potential as people with fixed traits, fulfilling their personal agenda, yeah. let's look at it as people growing and developing their abilities yeah. and working toward their contribution to society collaborating with others on their contribution to society. We believe and we've seen that this development of abilities happens in contexts, in cultures that believe abilities can be developed. Yes, I think a great takeaway is the culture. It takes time. It's, mm-hmm. So first of all, is there, you talk about a fixed mindset, a growth mindset. Is it that black and white? No. Uh, First of all, everybody has both. Even if you're predominantly in a growth mindset, you you have triggers that trigger you into a fixed mindset. When you're struggling, when you're criticized, when you see someone who's much better than you and you thought you were great, uh, this can uh, make you say, oh, maybe I don't have the talent after all. Uh, So... Uh, Yeah, we're all a mixture. And also, it's not just an individual thing that lives in an individual person's head. Mindsets can be embedded in classroom culture, organizational cultures, and societies. 
is there a belief that all people can develop? Mm -hmm. And again, we're not promising to what mm -hmm. level. Uh, are there resources for people to develop? Are there opportunities for people to develop? That's a central role, huh? if you believe you can develop. Because mm -hmm. I think in your research, uh, what you showed is... If you well, you you probably can explain this better than I can. But go ahead. That that if you if you have uh, uh, if you if you let children um, know that if you give it, instill them the belief, like read a news article that you can develop, you can mm -hmm. grow. They will grow if they have the belief next to the control group that doesn't yeah. have that belief. So it's not as easy as just reading an article. We worked uh, several years to create this short program. But when kids deeply believe they are capable of growth through hard work, good strategies, support and mentoring from others, they take challenges. They stick to them. And when you do that, you learn more. As to kids who don't, mm -hmm. in, are not instilled yeah. with that belief, they give up more easy. More easily. More easily. But again, we find you can instill a growth mindset in kids, but if their peers yes. don't approve of working hard in school, you can't risk that. No. Or if their teachers have um, all kinds of fixed mindset practices then they can't necessarily maintain that growth mindset. So it's a combination of what children believe and what the context they're in support. All right. So it's, it's, um, it's a, a misconception that growth mindset is just work hard, work harder. Total misconception. Uh, hard work is one element, but if you don't have the knowledge and strategies, you're mm -hmm. not going to be able to learn or move forward or improve. And then you will think, I don't have it. I'm not talented. They told me hard work was enough. Yeah. It isn't. You have to find new strategies to try when, uh, when you're stuck. You have to learn what resources to use and what people to to go to when you're stuck or to take on new challenges. Well, you, you became a professor. Uh, you did this work uh, during your whole lifetime. How did you cope with it? How did you, did you already have a growth mindset? Or I did, did not. You did not? <laughs> I did not have, I had some, you know, we were a mixture. But when I started being a professor, I didn't really like to work that hard. Now I work all the time. But at that point, um, when I was a young professor, I passed uh, the psychology building late at night and I saw some lights on in other professors' offices. And I thought, oh, they must not be as smart as I am if they have to work all night. Uh, so I did not. And uh, I didn't uh, take on the hardest challenges that I could. And um, I didn't want to show my papers to people in advance. I didn't seek all kinds of criticism and feedback. But through my work, I developed more of a growth mindset. And now... Yes, I'm, it was it the other way around. So you, through your work, you think, hey, this strategy, this works. But yeah. am I am, am, am I doing I this... Am I living the growth mindset? Am yeah. I walking the talk? <laughs> yeah. So did you do, did you, what did you do to, to embrace criticism? Uh, yeah. So at first I pushed myself. I pushed myself to do harder things. I pushed myself to seek feedback. Um, How did you do that? Do you have some examples? I just did it, you know, because if I waited till it felt comfortable, years could pass. Yeah. I, ju I said, just do it. And then you see the benefits. You get great feedback. Your paper is better. You take on the challenge. It works great. It doesn't work. It didn't kill you. Yeah. But you have, I think, you have to go through some pain or through some struggle with Absolutely. it right it doesn't change, feel change is 
uncomfortable, <laughs> especially when you've succeeded in the old system. Yeah. Yeah, because you had, oh, I'm, I'm successful. Um, I'm, I'm kind of happy. Yeah, it's all mm -hmm. good. So mm -hmm. why should I? Yeah, what's the payoff? But there's a big payoff. I, I might not have written my book Mindset yeah. if I wasn't up for a challenge. Academics were not writing books for the general public much at that mm -hmm. point. It was a risk. But it was a risk that I was excited to take. So you were, before, you were not actually taking in your, or, or expanding your whole human potential. That's right. You were right. holding back. That's right. Cool. Yeah. So it has, isn't, doesn't this have something to do with also with risk and taking risk and safety? Because safety and comfort is, of course, it's a human condition that... Mm -hmm. We all kind of want, and we yes. want to. We want to feel the safety of home, the safety of work, uh, recognition for the work yes. we do, versus the risk that will take us maybe further, but can also, well, not kill us. Maybe yeah. hopefully, but what's fascinating to me about humans is we like safety, but we're also born for growth. Yeah, how do we and combine exploration? That? And the problem is. When growth and exploration and risk, reasonable risk, yes. starts to feel unsafe. Why are we bringing safety into that? It's not like life and death in the jungle, mm. but it feels in a fixed mindset like life and death, psychological life yes. and death. So let's keep separate safety, physical. Let's make our kids, our employees, our athletes feel safe, taking risks, making mistakes, and growing. Yeah, it's funny you say that, life and death, because w when I was at the Olympics, it felt for me like life and death, a life and death, high-risk situation, mm -hmm. which got the best of me out of that moment. But but to get there, you need a, a baseline of safety. And with, growth. And growth, and the right yes. people around you, yes. the culture. Yes. Yeah, so so if you if you want to get it all out, take take the risks. You have to be you have to first create yeah. the environment yeah. to to really perform yeah. well. And then in the Olympic heat, give it everything yeah. like a life and death situation. Yes. But as you say, in between times, growth, growth, growth. Yes. But is there a time in your life where you would think, well, I'm I'm busy with the growth mindset, I'm ambitious. It's too much. Let 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 go of it. Is there a is there growth, a balance? Growth, yeah. A growth mindset doesn't mean you have to be pushing yourself every moment, mm -hmm. or you have to grow in every possible area. Mm -hmm. It should be exciting. It should be in line with the goals that you value, not just pushing, pushing, pushing. Because you can do that in a fixed mindset where, again, everything feels like life and death. Got to have it, got to have mm -hmm. it, got to succeed. So how do we, um, how, do you have some strategy or maybe even tactics about for, for us to become self-aware when we're in a growth or, or a fixed mindset? Like, like you said, the recognition that, the self-awareness is mm -hmm. a big factor. Yes. So based on work by my colleague in Australia, Susan Mackey, uh, first of all, we know now that everyone has fixed mindset triggers. Mm -hmm. People have to figure out when they start worrying about, do I have it? Do I not have it? Yes. Is it when you're faced with a challenge, when you're struggling, when someone's better than you, you figure out when is it that you start thinking, maybe they have the talent, I don't. Mm -hmm. When do you start wanting to look good in a way that curtails your learning? But is that's also part of the human condition. Can you be self-aware of that? Can you, how can you do this? Yeah. Or Get together with other people and talk about your triggers. You're not the only one. No, no. And Is that the honesty you need from the people around yeah, you? Yeah. Who can yeah. who can point out the yeah. point out these triggers? Yeah. And if you if you talk about them and they recognize them in you, or um, maybe it's good to know other people have similar triggers. 
Yes, you mentioned a, an example for a big Silicon Valley company, those with the G's and the O's, uh, <laughs> ab about a, uh, uh, the, 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 the culture there, which, which you worked on, um, that people uh, uh, embraced the, the failures they could tell each other. Yeah, yeah. It was liberating for this unit within a big company to understand that everyone was struggling with something. Everyone usually thinks, you, you see your own effort, you know mm -hmm. your own struggles. So you're always thinking, I'm the only one struggling. And especially in a culture that values genius and talent, yeah. uh, if you're struggling, you may think, I don't really belong here and they're going to discover me. When you find out that everyone is hiding their struggles too, it can be liberating. Yeah. And in this case, it kind of liberated that unit to um, air preliminary ideas, risk, risk of uh, uh, making mistakes. But more often than not, people brainstormed, collaborated, and it just led to greater innovation and creativity as reported by that unit. Yeah, yeah I can, I, from an athlete standpoint in a high performance uh, surroundings i think that this is a uh, what what athletes don't do because you have to keep up huh you, you're it's a life or death situation out there so yeah you're the 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 tough guy invincible. or girl yeah. i'm invincible <laughs> exactly nobody can touch me yeah so you have a lot of athletes after their career and you hear them about their struggles uh, the depression uh, i'm alone yes. because they yeah, they keep it for themselves. Because you put up that facade, but there are times you don't believe it, right? Yeah. You don't believe you're necessarily invincible. Of course not. Of course, deep within inside, you know, if you're out there, you know, it's scary. It's yeah. really scary. But if everyone shares their terror yeah. <laughs> uh, as normal in that high-pressure situation, mm -hmm. it can be liberating. Yes. That would be a good takeaway, I think, for a lot of... Mm -hmm. athletes and sports teams in particular i know but also of course company life if you can share the yeah. challenges the struggles that liberate you and yeah. you can even become more effective mm -hmm. yeah so i teach at a university that um, admits four and a half four and three quarter percent of the students who apply yeah so they show Stanford, up right Yes. yes, and they're terrified. They're excited, but they're terrified. What if I fail? Yeah, I'm not going to be the smartest one here as I was in mm -hmm. high school. Uh, what if I'm a loser? Uh, it's like they're terrified. And I go around the room every few weeks. What are they struggling with? They are shocked that everyone is struggling. And I have to tell you of this young man in one of my seminars um, one year who didn't like himself at all. He was a fantastic kid, but he actually disliked himself. Um, and at the end of the course, because people had shared their struggles, he said, I don't really like myself. But when I see that the other people in the chorus, whom I think are fabulous, cool, incredible people, when I see that they're struggling too, I think maybe I'm okay. Yeah, that's a great takeaway. Wow. Yeah, I think it, it, it's sort of, if you talk about, of course, huh, Stanford, and it's the, especially in high performance surroundings. It's so hard to do this because everybody wants to perform. But yeah. just in these environments, it's mm -hmm. so important to embrace that mindset. Yes. And I tell them it's not about getting more A's no. or higher scores than yeah. anyone else. That's over. <laughs> yeah. It's about becoming the person you want to be, using the resources here to become the person you want to be, the person who will make your unique contribution to the world. 
let's get out of that competitive framework yeah. and into this framework of learning and development toward your contribution. I had a, a great sentence again. It was so much information from you. Everyone is capable of becoming capable. Yes. I look at that and I told this literally my daughter F, this morning when I went to, to you. She was like, she's just started school mm -hmm. uh, yesterday. And uh, she was like, well, the, the, the math, it's like, whoa, I, I'm struggling with, she's eight years old. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I can't do this. I don't think I can do this. The whole class is in front of me. I'm lag, lagging. Uh, I'm slow. I'm not fit for this. So I heard her say this with almost tears in her eyes. And I said, well, I'm going to a professor who t mm -hmm. tells us about her research and who tells, well, it's not um, a, a fixed like this. Yeah. Anna, she's it's, my girl. It's like you can yeah. learn everything. Yeah. Learn it. Yeah. It's not about, first of all, it's probably not true. Everyone is getting it except yes. her. Yes. She just doesn't feel and see yeah. their struggle. But it's not always about fast learning. No. It's about improving. So I should tell her it's okay that you're, maybe it's not true, but it, it's about getting the next step, getting there. Yeah. And wanting and to improve. often in the early years, Kids may be confused about certain concepts, mm -hmm. but when they catch on to them, yes. they can move more quickly and easily. But how do we create that? How do we teach that is, is, as a parent or as a teacher? How do we deal with that? The teacher, the parents and the teachers need to create contexts that focus on learning and improvement. And the teacher should also work with students. What don't they understand? What are they finding hard? And, and work together to find the right strategies for moving forward. It's, it's terrible when someone wants to make their... It's, it's fine when people want to make their eight-year-old feel better, <laughs> but it's terrible when they may try to make them feel better by saying, oh, you know, not everyone can be a math person or don't feel bad, you're good at other things. Yes. It says give up. Yes. And of course, you're not saying everything rests on your being great at math, but it's a learning process. And she should know a lot of students struggle with it, but master it. Yeah, so it's the empathy. Everybody yeah. struggles with it. And Not everybody. A many lot. students. Many students. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I, I like the nuances. Uh, because it's, of course, it, it, the nuances are important because yeah. else you get, it's a growth mindset. This is work hard and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like you uh, told us, that's not the case. Um, and you to also told us you never know in advance where one's capable of. So I have a company with, we employ people. Um, if, if you look from a leadership role, um, I want the best people in my company. Absolutely. But is it, how yeah. do I do that? How do I look at that? How do yeah. I look at talent? First of all, to clarify and to say again, we never promise any, a growth mindset doesn't promise anyone that they'll no. succeed or that they'll reach a certain level. Just suggests that everybody can develop and improve. Now, if you have a company, of course you want to look for capable people. You mm -hmm. don't want to hire anybody and wait for them to improve. No. But you also want people who want to keep growing. Yes. You don't want these geniuses who are going to make everybody feel intimidated so that they can feed their egos. No. Uh, you want people who will inspire other people. And uh, you don't want people who just want to look like geniuses. You want people who are going to learn and grow and contribute to that culture. Yes. But I find I found, find it hard sometimes to find these people. If you, if you look at a population, um, I think they can be developed. Uh, and and if you have young people over, of course they they excel in something, but they have to mm -hmm. learn a lot in all the other th other other things. How how can we help these young people yeah. to develop or to to believe they yeah. can develop into? What we have found in our research is that people really find they are 
really sensitive to the values of the culture they're in. Yes. When you get a new job, you say, what does it take to succeed here? What do they value? Do they value genius? Mm -hmm. I better look like a genius. Do they value learning growth and innovation? And will they have my back if it doesn't work mm -hmm. out, if it was a reasonable thing to do and it doesn't work out? They see what the culture values. Um, am I getting promoted or a um, uh, uh, positive evaluation, not just for big success, but also for taking on challenges, for growing, for mentoring others, for being a team player yes. and supporting others? They see what you value yes. and they make it their own. So what you value, that is your output, what you get from a person. And that's not about uh, the, uh, uh, about um, output from a company uh, in, in uh, uh, shareholder value yeah, <laughs> or in a gold medal. That's important. That's, yeah, an, that's, the, that's the outcome of a process. That is a byproduct, exactly. the outcome of a healthy process. Yes, it's the means to an end yes. instead of... And often, as teachers, as leaders of an organization, we're afraid to trust the process. We often want to mm. just results. focus on the results. We have to trust that if the process is great and people are having great ideas and they're working together, that the output will benefit too. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's, it's, if you, t Silicon Valley next to your door. Yes. Um, it's of course, I think the whole learning environment, the lean startup uh, environment, yeah. uh, adjusting, failing, fast yes. iterations. Yes. It's, it's a little bit more like that already, right? Yes, somewhat. Somewhat, yes. <laughs> Mostly, yes. Uh, yeah, I but there's still a big premium on success, and success is great. Yes. But success coming out of learning and growth is even greater. Success coming from learning and growth. I had a, a, a sentence myself, life is a struggle of figuring out life. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's... Growth mindset is a figuring out process. How do I do this? It's on a deeper level, just figuring out life. Yeah, a grow. Yeah, growth mindset toward life. Yes, it's figuring it out, learning, growing. Yeah. Have you figured it out? I'm a work in progress, <laughs> aren't you? I am. I am. <laughs> I think it never ends, right? Yeah, it never ends. Thank you very much for your time. You're so welcome. Thanks for listening to my Drive podcast. If you want to listen to more episodes, make sure you subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or you can find me on firstenergygum.com within the media menu. Thank you for listening.